Hello, this is Jeffrey Hashem. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Ready Shred Capital Corp. I'm pleased to walk you through our company presentation, our business, and our performance. I'll leave these up for a few moments. Right. Um, just wanted to touch base uh, on our business. I'll start just with the simple facts. Uh, our stock symbol, uh, a stock symbol on the Toronto Stock Exchange, the Venture Exchange, is KUT. We have uh, ninety point four million shares outstanding. Uh, the price, as of midday yesterday, was eighty two cents. We have a market cap of uh, just under seventy five million and an enterprise value of just about one hundred million dollars. We'll talk about uh, our company and, and our primary brand is ProShred uh, and ProShred is in the um, information destruction business. So uh, what we do on our trucks is we shred paper, hard drives, product, anything else that can safely uh, go through uh, our shredders that are located on the trucks. So um, uh, that's the majority of our business at the moment. Uh, that, that's what we would call our cash cow. Uh, as we have, uh, as you can see from all these red dots, we have 30 cities, uh, 30 locations, sorry, covering 40 major markets. We shred on site. And what does that mean? We, we have shredders on trucks. We take those trucks to our clients and we shred at their door. Uh, that is the most safe way and the most secure way of shredding. And uh, we've been doing this for over 30 years and um, uh, we have a great brand reputation. We service primarily small, medium sized enterprise clients. And we do this via a blend of franchised locations and corporately operated about 50 50 split. We also have now two newer um, uh, product or service offerings. Uh, I'll start with the security cycle. Security cycle is in the secure uh, electronic waste business. We have a, a large facility in Kansas, Kansas State, uh, and we service the majority of the Midwest uh, where we um, uh, take on uh, electronics, uh, primarily um, uh, laptops, uh, computer equipment, uh, and we refurbish and resell, always destroying the hard drives. Uh, and or recycling. Uh, so it's a very green solution because we're either reusing, refurb and reuse or we're recycling. Um, by the way, on the pro shred side, all the paper we shred uh, is recycled as well. So, so also a very green business. ProScan Solutions is our digital imaging scanning business where we take archived information and uh, scan and index so it's searchable for our clients. And in a number of cases, we also store their information on the cloud. So those are our three business um, platforms. Uh, again, ProShred being the largest of the bunch, ProScan being the highest growth, and Security Cycle servicing the Midwest. Okay. Our drivers of growth. Uh, we have a three-pronged strategy, and I think it's very critical to understand the, the strategy of our growth. Number one, the locations that we have, we want to grow them. We have a sales and marketing engine, and we want to grow both our revenues and our EBITDA. We want to focus on recurring revenue streams. Whether recurring revenue streams are in the paper side, uh, in ProShred, it's well over 50% recurring, or even in the ProScan business, where there's a lot of repeat and recurring business. Um, we, we're really focused on the recurring revenue streams and we're really focused on small, medium-sized enterprise. doesn't mean we don't have large clients, but we, we certainly focus on the small, medium-sized enterprise. Our average revenue per customer on the, on the shredding, paper shredding side, side is just over $100 per month. So you can imagine we have tens of thousands of customers we service on in any given month. Um, and of course, there's very little economic dependence when you have that many clients that you're taking care of. By having these other services, we're able to now layer in scanning and e-waste to those clients, which is wonderful. And the more services you provide a single client, the more sticky those clients are and the more durable those clients are. And, and so sticky, durable clients produce sticky and durable cash flow. That's number one. Number two, uh, we conduct accretive acquisitions. We have purchased uh, 14 franchisees over time, and we're going to continue to purchase franchisees when they wish to retire or exit. 
So that's the good news is that the, the, that we have an in-house built-in acquisition pipeline of franchisees. And then of course there are independents. There are mom and pops that have shredding trucks. There are mom and pops that have scanning businesses. There are mom and pops that have e-waste businesses. And of course we would like to buy a certain component of that market. And when we buy a franchisee and our franchisees tend to be larger operations, they create in a major metro market, it creates a hub. And then when we go out and buy an independent and they tend to be one or two trucks, we get to tap those uh, routes into our routes. And, and that's where our real economic synergies come from is from the routing economics, the back office costs are eliminated, some marketing costs that are eliminated. So acquisitions are important to our strategy. Last and not least is supporting our franchisees and helping them grow a durable and sustainable revenue and EBITDA stream. If they're successful over their 10 years, they're gonna be happy because they've made money along the way. And then when they wish to exit, we buy a business that is solid and a good business with durable cash flow streams always has a higher value than an event-based business. So, so they get a win uh, when they wish to retire or exit. And we get a win because uh, we get a solid business and their employees get a win because we often take the majority of their employees along for the next stage uh, of that of that location. It's one thing to have a strategy. It's another thing to execute. We've executed on our strategy. If we look at the middle box here, um, we have conducted 66 over $66 million in acquisitions since 2018. Uh, we have continued with the exception of uh, the four quarters during COVID. We have consistently grown same location service revenue. And that's very important because paper revenue can go up or down, but service revenue, we've continued to grow it. We're currently well over $45 million in revenue run rate. We're over 25% um, uh, margin, EBITDA margin. We have a 10-year EBITDA CAGR of 80%. We've executed on the game plan. So let's go over here to the left, the pro ship franchisees. There's still $10 million of EBITDA left to buy. I'm speaking right now in Canadian dollars um, just because we are obviously a Canadian reporting issuer. So $10 million in EBITDA uh, with our franchisees. And over the next three to five years, we would like to buy our franchisees. So keep doing what we're doing. We, we have the opportunity to add 30 plus million in revenue and 10 million plus in EBITDA. That's number one. Number two, independence. There's 750 independents in the United States with $750 million in market share. The majority of these independents are now located in pro shred locations, whether franchised or corporate or in adjacent markets. So again, the, the idea of getting route density is very real. If we buy 5% of that market, it's about $35 million in revenue and another 10 million in EBITDA. So uh, we can do the math here on this page and um, just doing what we're doing without growth, organic growth, without buying scanning companies, uh, without buying e-waste companies, uh, we have an opportunity to build a significant business um, just continuing to do what we're doing. Let's talk about performance. Uh, again, um, we talked high level about executing um, we're fortunate enough here to have our first quarter results that we released yesterday, today being May 27th, yesterday being May 26th, 2022. Um, despite some headwinds, we had a record quarter. Uh, and and I'll, I'll direct everyone to this chart on the right-hand side. Um, we had $4 million in EBITDA for 32% EBITDA margin in the first quarter. Um, in all of 2021, we had 9.2 million in EBITDA and 25% EBITDA margin. Now, why, why have we done so well? Some of these things are very much in our control uh, and, uh, and, and operationally we performed. Um, we also had the advantage of paper prices going up, which is great. Um, uh, paper prices do go up and down. Uh, we are certainly in an upswing. Uh, I've been at this 17 years and seen many up and down markets. Uh, the long-term average for paper price is about $140 and we're north of 200. So same corporate location EBITDA. And I talked about same corporate locations, measuring you know, what we owned a year ago to what we own today. We're up $1.6 million, 
42% direct EBITDA margin, a 700 basis point improvement over the prior year. Um, EBITDA was up five, not including paper revenue, not including paper revenue. Our EBITDA was up $500,000 or a 30% increase versus the prior year. EBITDA margins excluding paper revenue was 29%, 100 basis point improvement. So this is important stats of operationally, we continued to, uh, to perform. And we added $1 million in acquired EBITDA. So locations that were not with us a year ago. So during the last 12 months, less a day, uh, we acquired a million dollars in EBITDA. So this is how we got to the $4 million. So what impacted us? So same location service revenue was up 26%. Paper prices were at historical high. Tonnage was up 23%. And that offset higher fuel costs. That, that was certainly negative. We all know fuel costs have gone through the roof, uh, and we felt that too, but more than offset. Uh, Omicron impacted January 2022, just like the airlines, uh, our, our, our route drivers and our, our customer service professionals, a lot of them contracted COVID Omicron, uh, so they couldn't be on the trucks. Uh, so a lot of uh, staff shortages, route disruption over time. Um, Many of our clients had to shut their doors for that month as well. We got through that. We still put up numbers like this with that. Um, other challenges that we face, of course, are supply chain with, re with respect to truck parts and truck uh, obtaining new trucks. Uh, we've been working through those. Um, everyone faces those. We just got to be creative. And, and uh, instead of trading in older trucks, we're keeping them. So that way we can use them uh, as backup trucks uh, just to make sure that we can continue to deliver to our clients the service that they've been promised and, and so far so good. Let's look at the revenue. Uh, EBIT, we always start with EBITDA. Bottom line is bottom line. Um, so if we look at our revenue for the first quarter, uh, almost $10 million were from corporate locations and about a half a million dollars uh, were from royalties. So uh, obviously, and that's not the right number, but we're close. Um, um, it's actually $12 million, sorry, uh, in corporate location revenue and half a million dollars in royalty revenue um, to get to $12.5 million. So uh, certainly a very good quarter, uh, corporate locations driving the story, driving the bottom line. Uh, we look at that revenue in the first quarter, uh, same corporate location service revenue was up 1.2 million. Same corporate location scanning revenue is up 0.4 million or 126%. Recycling sales up 1.1 million, 180%. And acquired revenue is up 1.9 million uh, added, to the, added to the revenue mix. So very solid, very diverse, very broad-based growth. Every line of business grew, which was excellent. So we weren't dependent on any one line. Uh, all, all were doing very, very well. And, and how are we doing that? We have a strong sales and marketing team, new trucks, targeting the right customer, targeting them with recurring service, and conducting acquisitions. If I look at same location service revenue on a quarter by quarter basis, excluding paper revenue, uh, we can see here um, prior to COVID, we had 21 straight quarters of same location service revenue growth. The COVID time, we were down about 15-ish percent. Obviously, the first quarter of COVID was tough, but, but we started to recover. And since the second quarter of 21, we've been up and up strong. And uh, that, that uh, was very critical that we wanted to come out of COVID strong. We invested in sales. We invested in marketing. We invested in technology. We invested in people. We invested in trucks. And we were able to come out of COVID extremely strong. And uh, now we're certainly in acquisition mode and uh, will continue to be in acquisition mode. These growth rates include the COVID times. So still growing even through COVID uh, on a long-term basis. Acquisitions, we've conducted 66.2 million in acquisitions. Uh, you can see here over the last number of years, uh, we've done the majority of them. We've started off a little slow here in the first quarter, anticipated. Uh, we have a strong pipeline. Uh, we're not going to just do half a million dollars in acquisitions, and you'll see why in a moment. We have the capacity financially and people to conduct acquisitions going forward, and we will. We have a strong pipeline. 
before I jump to the balance sheet, uh, GNA costs as a percentage of revenue continue to drop. Why? We're growing the top line. We're acquiring this. We certainly don't need two CEOs and CFOs to run this company. We're getting operating leverage. We're also centralizing key back office functions. We're using technology. We're centralizing tasks. That's how we get operating leverage. And we're certainly seeing that, which is excellent. We look here at this chart. I think the key message here is our EBITDA per share, uh, four and a half cents. I'll talk about EBITDA per share on the next slide in a little more detail. Our operating income less interest, which is really a measure of cash flow, $2.4 million. All of 2021, we did 3.5. So very strong first quarter performance. Cash, uh, just under $10 million in cash. We also have $4.4 million in uh, available debt capacity. Um, we have a balance sheet that, <clears throat> which is great that we can continue to, to conduct acquisitions, continue to invest in growth. If I look here at the EBITDA reconciliation, we were at two and a half cents a year ago in Q1 2021. Um, why do we have this reconciliation? We did conduct an equity raise of uh, 9.8 million shares. Um, $8.6 million, uh, December 23rd, 2021. So I think it's important for us to, to communicate that first and foremost, the same location revenue going up uh, the, the ch is off, offsetting way more than change in costs because we were profitable. That added uh, 1.3 cents. The acquired EBITDA of, from locations with us under one year that we've acquired, 1.2 cents. The dilution from that equity raise is half a cent. And so we get to four and a half cents per share. It's a 77% increase over the prior year. That equity raise was not dilutive. And in fact, it's going to be heavily accretive as we conduct acquisitions going forward because we have the capacity to do that because of the equity raise. So the equity raise was well-timed, end of December, stock was doing well, and of course, uh, with the first quarter results, the stock is doing well. Again, knock on wood, we're very pleased about that. So we have the ability to do it and we have a pipeline to do it. Just talk about the acquisitions a little more detail. We have really two types, franchisees, revenue range between one and a half and two and a half million for the most part. Strong recurring revenue, good truck fleet, not an age truck fleet, under, under five years old. Strong direct EBITDA. And we're paying five to six and a half times multiple. These are hub locations. <clears throat> Independence, uh, revenue range is 100 to a million, 100K to a million. Scheduled revenue mix is all over the place. They tend to be less than 50. Trucks tend to be less than three. EBITDA range tends to be less than 30%. And so how are we buying them? Sometimes an asset sale, asset-based, because they don't have EBITDA, but those routes have value to us. So we tuck them in. And when they do have EBITDA, they can range up to about a four multiple of EBITDA. And these are for the smaller independents. And uh, of course, when we buy them and we tuck, in their, tuck them into our routes and we eliminate some of the back office costs, we see uh, strong EBITDA and cash flow accretion. Just a little contact information. Uh, I'm the CEO, as I mentioned. My, my contact information is here. Um, Harjeet Barar is our CFO. His contact information is also here. Uh, what I would also like to make sure is um, we don't do this alone. Uh, and, and, and what I would like to do is um, talk a little bit about our values. Um, we live by these values. Our values are to make it easy for our clients to do business with us. Our values are about integrity. We have to be because we're in the security business. Accountability, respect, growth, awareness. Um, by having these values and making it easy for our employees to conduct business and clients to conduct business, this is how we win in the marketplace. These values are central. They're on big murals in all of our offices. Um, we, we really believe in empowering our team uh, to do the right things every day. And for me, uh, you know, there's three C's, care, character, and courage. Have the care to do it right, 
have the character to do it right when no one is looking and have the courage to be resilient through tough times. And I'm very fortunate to have a great team that's done it. Here's the team. Um, team has grown. These are the key uh, top uh, senior management. Um, um, we have Harjeet, who's our senior VP and chief financial officer, um, a very bright accountant um, with, with Ernst & Young uh, prior. Uh, Ron Gable, um, seven plus years with ProShred, also spent time at Shreddit, strong logistics experience and former consultant with a couple of the big four firms. And Francesco Marascia is our VP of marketing and now ProScan. We've added the ProScan portfolio, uh, six years with, with Ray Shred, ProShred, very strong digital marketing, very strong marketer. Uh, we like to give him these new service lines to crack the code. Uh, and, uh, and that's exactly what he's doing. Just from a value perspective as well, uh, we can see here, we service many, many industries, not just one industry. We provide numerous information management services, um, and we do it through a number of brands. And we target small, medium-sized enterprise. Just from a market size perspective, this industry is $3.6 billion a year. About half, more than half of it is vended. Two billion is vended. 1.6 billion, that means people are shredding themselves. And that's risky. It's not often green. And it's not good use of time or money. And that's our go-to-market strategy when we're talking with clients. We're listening to hear what their pain points are and understanding how we can solve their pain points with either a shredding solution, an e-way solution, or a digital imaging solution. I mentioned Shreddit and Iron Mountain are, are two large competitors in this space. Here's where they're located. They're off-site providers mainly, um, especially now Shreddit was an on-site provider, more an off-site provider and more a waste removal company. We focus on information destruction, information management, information security, and we focus on small and medium-sized enterprise. We've talked about this as our, our growth strategy. Uh, we continue to execute on this. It's about driving cash flow. And we are cash flow positive, which is great. And um, we will continue to be cash flow positive. So that all being said, uh, I would like to thank everybody for taking some time and listening to our presentation and listening to our story. Um, we've been executing on our game plan. And, um, you know, I'll take this one moment to thank my team, uh, our employees, our customer service professionals, my board of directors, our franchisees and our shareholders for their support. We don't do it alone. We do it together. Thank you.